car park where we parked your vehicles this morning. Now the prisoners at the time, one of the duties they had was clearing the bushes and the scrub from the surrounding area as well as planting the trees we can see in the background there. Now the trees in the background would also become the world's largest man-made forest, so no mere feet. Now one day while they were clearing the bushes and the scrub, they came across the clearing that we're all sitting in today. But what they found looked nothing like the guys that we see here. In fact, it was more along the lines of a hot spring, which was roughly shaped like the rocky formation just slightly behind me there, closest to the bushes. Now, as you guys can imagine, working outside in the dust and dirt every day, the prisoners get quite dirty and so do the clothing. So rather than going back to the prison, collecting firewood, create boiling hot water to do the laundry, they thought they come straight into the natural hot spring to do the clothing. Now one day while they were doing the clothing, one of the prisoners dropped a rather large bar of soap into the water. After a few minutes, they start noticing little differences. A bit of a rumbling sensation underneath their feet, and also rumbling noises around them. After a few more minutes, what happened was, the clothing shot skywards, and the prisoners bolted off into the background there, never to be seen or heard from again. <laughs> Until a few hours later when they got caught. Now, what exactly happens is, is that underneath our feet, there's a reservoir of water which holds roughly about 30,000 litres of water and is roughly shaped like an hourglass. And like an hourglass, it has two sides. Now, the bottom half of water is superheated to around about 150 degrees Celsius and the top layer around about 90. And what the top layer does, it acts as a blanket, keeping the superheated water down below at bay and making sure it doesn't shoot straight through the top. However, by dropping the large bar of soap into the water, it breaks the surface tension, mixing those two temperatures together quite rapidly, which causes a flash of steam and eventually pushes all the water straight through the top. Now, for the last 80 years or so, we've been doing something very similar. But rather than using soap, we use a chemical called surfactant. It's got very similar properties to soap, but it doesn't leave any harmful chemicals or minerals in Mother Nature. So today, that's exactly what I'll be doing for you. Now, before I get any hecklers in the crowds trying to tell me that can't be a real geyser if I throw that down there, I can assure you folks, even if we don't throw this effectant in the geyser, it would still go off naturally, usually between 24 hours and 72 hours. But trying to predict when exactly it'll go off is rather impossible. So we give Mother Nature a bit of a helping hand, you whisper sweet nothings into her ear to make her erupt. Look at that, ain't that pretty? Mm -mm -mm. Now, the geyser itself, when it erupts, it'll start teetering at about 5 metres height, and usually reach heights of up to 10 to 15. And depending on how much water and pressure is underneath us, it can also reach heights of up to 20 to 25 metres. <coughs> but it's up to the geyser herself to show us how high she'll be going. Also, when the geyser erupts, it'll usually last for about 45 minutes and up to an hour. But the best part is right at the beginning when you reach its highest point. Now, like I said in the beginning, the guys looked nothing like this. It was a hot spring. The prisoners at the time thought they would have a bit more fun with the hot spring. So, taking the rocks from the surrounding area, they packed it around the mouth of the hot spring, kind of creating a rough cone shape we see here today. And as the water trickles over the rocks, it deposits a mineral called silica. And as it hardens, it gives us the white cone shape we see here today. Every day, as it does so, it makes it harder and stronger for years to come. Now, getting back to the little history lesson, around about 1903, Lord Ranfurly, New Zealand's 15th Governor General, came down to the prison to see how it was going with his lovely young daughter, Lady Constance Knox. And while they were here, Lady Constance Knox had the opportunity of christening the geyser. And being the very lovely and beautiful lady that she was, she named it after herself. So that's where we get the name from. Okay. Now, me personally, I've already had a shower this morning. However, if there's some people in the crowds that haven't, come and sit in the front of you guys. We've got the hot water, we've got the soap. All you need is a bit of a towel in for afterwards. Okay? Now, there might be a bit of a breeze up in the air, so if any of the water does blow into the crowds, guys, don't worry. By the time it reaches you, it won't be hot at all. Just be a nice, warm, soapy feeling, so there's no need to worry. Okay? Now, if you guys are going into the park afterwards again, please stay on the footpaths as there for your protection. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask myself or any other staff members in the park. And before this guy goes off, I'm going to bolt it. And like I said, you'll start hearing the differences, like a little bit of a rumbling sensation around us. That tells us it's just going to go off. Okay, guys? Once again, welcome to the Lady Knox Geyser. And enjoy your stay at Wyatt Topham. Yeah. <laughs> 
Pas des amis de bord, mais je dis, j'arrête pas. C'est quoi qui a balancé Thank <laughs> you. 